Survival Kids is one of my favorite lesser known games of all time, and I haven't seen many reviews of it on YouTube, so I decided to add my own. It was made by Konami in 1999 for the Game Boy Color, and it was never very big. The premise is simple, and it predates all the indie open world survival games in the market today. A boy or a girl, your choice, is on a cruise ship with their survivalist dad, but ends up stranded on a deserted island after a storm wrecks the ship. Once on the island, the kid has to try to survive and possibly find the way off the island. All sorts of things can happen once you're there, as the game has multiple endings and many choices to make. The game gets to the point quickly. Before long, you find the backpack your dad gave you, complete with a knife, a radio, and some useless matches. And close by is a canteen. You're gonna need these things. You have hunger, thirst, and fatigue counters to be aware of, and it's up to you to collect food, drink water, and sleep in order to stay alive. If you know you're going to be away from the source of water for a while, you want to fill your canteen with the nearest clean water possible. Making things tricky is that, like in real life, the food and drink aren't always healthy or safe. Some food can paralyze you or make you thirsty. One area contains dirty water that makes you sick. You have to learn what does what through trial and error, but once you do, the game keeps track of it for you. The game is a mixture of linear and open-ended. There are puzzles to solve, but most of them are in the simple form of just using items in the appropriate situation, like using a large stick to move a boulder out of the way to reach a new area. You have to combine items together from the menu to create things such as kindling to set fires, or torches to see in the dark. Combining items is as simple as, com as choosing two or sometimes three from a menu and seeing the combination. There's no grindy crafting though. No need to collect a whole bunch of one thing in order to create another thing. Indeed, everything in the game happens quickly. Time of day only passes when you're moving, so if you stop frequently to think about what you plan to do next, time freezes. If you move a lot, it could be night before you expect it, and you'll need a place to sleep. The game contains a number of realistic elements that fit well the concept of survival in the wild. It's possible to smoke out a beehive by burning a dead leaf, and collect the honey, a very useful food that doesn't spoil. Meat and clams can spoil in only a day unless you cook them or preserve them. Eating them rotten causes harm, but cooking meat has many benefits, including waking you up and lowering your fatigue and restoring a little bit of health. But that meat has to come from somewhere, and that's where wild animals come in. Some try to kill you, others try to run from you, and you have to decide if it's worth it to try attacking a grizzly bear with a knife, or instead just run for it. The fact that time stays still when you're not moving works to your advantage, as does the fact that all animals move at the same speed you do. Killing an animal provides meat. Konami tried to milk this game's setting for all it's worth, so there's tremendous diversity of terrain. There's beaches, jungles, forests, mountains, caves, a swamp, a desert, some ruins, and even an abandoned ship. There's a lot of variety in what overall is actually a rather small island. It might not be all that realistic, but it keeps the scenery from being repetitive. Compact is really the word I'd use to describe it. A small world combined with a fast day-night cycle makes for a rather fast-moving game and there's a handful of surprises to find. Later on, it's possible to encounter another kid lost on the island. And if you do, you end up caring for them while they're resting in the ship. That means that you not only get food to sustain yourself, but also the other kid. Bringing healthy food back to revive the other kid improves your relationship and also helps determine what ending you might get at the end of the game. Yes, what ending? There's eight different endings, and not all of them are happy. In one of them, the other kid dies. Obtaining the different endings is a result of how you play, and there are opportunities to obtain specific ones. For example, early on you can get an ending where you manage to attract the attention of a rescue helicopter that's combing the area looking for survivors. Other endings are obtained by simply living on the island for 100 days, either by yourself or with the other kid or finding a way to escape using the abandoned ship. The conditions for the different endings are sometimes radically different, and after you win, the game encourages you to earn more endings. 
Survival Kids doesn't have much of a story in the traditional sense, but rather, the story is open and contains optional cutscenes and dialogue that are triggered by events that might or might not occur. The English dialogue is mostly decent, but occasionally awkward in translation, as Konami didn't seem totally aware of what an American 10-year-old sounds like. Most of the time, it's fine, and the kid shows a range of emotions from excitement to utter terror. Some of it is a bit off, though. Your kid says, upsy daisy, upsy daisy, when they climb out of a pitfall, and suddenly he talks like a cowboy in part of the game's best ending, which is just weird. But other than that, most of the dialogue is fine, and it sounds like the heartfelt emotions of a kid stranded on a deserted island. It might be imperfect, but I like this game a lot. It moves fast, and it isn't based around grinding the way many open-world survival games are today. Also, unlike many open-world survival games, it combines open-endedness with a semi-narrative in the form of story elements and multiple endings. It was a different experience in its time, and it remains a different experience today.